only guys can have all the nerdy fun. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 female nerds in TV. Now before this goes any further, you should know that all forms of physical contact up to and including coitus are off the table. <laughs> for this list, we're paying tribute to the book smart, tech smart, and somewhat awkward ladies of TV. We'll only be looking at the live action dweebs, so animated nerds are a list all their own. Ever since the map called us, I've been doing a ton of research. Testing out potential friendship problems. Number 10, Felicity Smoke, Arrow. Hi, I'm Oliver Queen. Of course. I know who you are, you're Mr. Queen. No, Mr. Queen was my father. Oliver Queen, aka Green Arrow, may be the hero vigilante of the series, but Team Arrow wouldn't be anything without Felicity Smoke. Except Oliver brought me a laptop riddled with bullet holes, had me trace a black arrow, and research a company involved in armored car heists. I may be blonde, but I'm not that blonde. Felicity once worked in the IT department of Queen Consolidated, though her unmatched computer hacking skills were not being used to their full potential. That is, until Oliver asks her to pick up data from a destroyed laptop. Originally intended to be a one-off character, fans love Felicity's tech smarts and poor choices of words. Didn't you get my text? Mom, to send a text, you actually have to press send on the text. Oh, okay. Not a big deal, I'll do it right now. Now she's a vital part of Team Arrow, offering both tech support and moral support. Though she's not a fighter by choice, she can handle herself in any situation, unless it has to do with Oliver. I can't do this. When your son was in danger, I had to table what I was feeling about everything. Number nine, Annie Edison, Community. Hey guys! Thanks for getting involved in my love life. That was super cool and mature of you. Oh, and since you're both clearly idiots, I should probably let you know that I'm being sarcastic. Sometimes the studious ones can be the scariest. Annie is the youngest member of the study group and easily the most ambitious about her studies. I'm Annie Edison, but people call me psycho because I had a nervous breakdown in high school. My partner's a Christian housewife. Can we help you? She was an excellent student in high school, until she had to drop out after a little incident involving Adderall. Before she dropped out, she had braces and acne and a pill addiction and a nervous breakdown ending with her running through a plate glass door screaming, everyone's a robot! Now she's trying to make up for it at Greendale Community College to follow her dream of becoming a forensic scientist. Go ahead and hate me. It's better than what was going to happen. We were all gonna drift apart and you were all too cool to do anything. Most of the time, Annie's a cheerful and serious type A student who actually studies in the group. However, if something doesn't go her way, well, it's not pretty. <laughs> Even so, at the end of the day, she still tries her best no matter what. And one day, it'll all pay off. I got the internship. I'm going to intern for the FBI. Okay. Ah! I leave in a week. I'll be in DC all summer. Number eight, Mindy Crenshaw, Drake and Josh. I have a different theory. Oh, what's that, Mindy? Josh Nichols is obviously the intelligent one of the bickering stepbrothers. But one person may just be smarter than him. Mindy Crenshaw. Mindy's a certified genius, but she's pretty conceited about it, never wasting an opportunity to rub it in Josh's face how she can beat him at, well, everything. I can finally win. I wouldn't count on that one, Josh. <laughs> Needless to say, she's initially not very popular with the brothers, but later on, her competition with Josh takes an unexpected turn. Fine. Ah. Then I guess we're boyfriend and girlfriend. One condition. What? I get to be the boyfriend. Unfortunately, their old rivalry ends up getting in the way of their relationship, as Josh feels inferior, and it leads to their breakup. Until we've both had a little more experience dating, we can't really know if us is right. Mindy may outclass Josh in academics, but she's willing to put aside their little conflict if it means they can get back together. So you want to get back together? Okay. But I get to be the girlfriend. <laughs> Number seven, Temperance Bones Brennan. Bones. What are you trying to do? Blackmail you. Blackmail a federal agent. Yes. Sometimes the most brilliant people have the least graceful social skills. Dr. Temperance Brennan, loosely based on Kathy Reich's author of the original books, 
is an anthropologist detective for the Jeffersonian Institute in Washington, D.C. She's nicknamed Bones because of her top-notch skills at analyzing skeletal remains, even when there's barely anything left to analyze. You see this kind of thing all the time. Kids come up here, get baked, do their own version of the Blair Witch Project. I don't know what that means. Though Bones is a master at anthropology, her social skills leave a lot to be desired. She doesn't pick up on pop culture references, and she isn't very tactful about political or religious views either. I'm not working a whole case with you attacking my beliefs. You should have just sailed off with your boyfriend. Funny man who believes in an invisible super being wants to run my personal life. However, her partner, FBI agent Celie Booth, and team of squints can't hate her. And neither can we. She just needs a chance to get out of her comfort zone. Hold it out. Oh. Yeah, come on, give us a few bars. Come on. I can't just bust into song. I have to have music and an appropriate atmosphere of frivolity. Number six, Abby Shudo, NCIS. Paradox wrapped in an oxymoron, smothered in contradictions in terms, sleeps in a coffin. Really, the happiest goth you'll ever meet. Abby is the chief forensic scientist for the NCIS major case response team. And needless to say, she's got the skills to pay the bills. She's able to pick up the tiniest details that even the best microscope can't see. Don't you think you're obsessing a little? You know what I found in the little fibers, Chippy? Sodium, chloride, potassium, lactate, urea. Sweat. Although her gothic exterior and various tattoos might suggest otherwise, She's very perky and friendly, loves to drink high-energy caffeine drinks, and has a farting stuffed hippo named Bert. Oh, Here. Yes. You can use Bert as a pillow. <laughs> her quirks have endeared her to her co-workers, to the point where they love and try to protect her, especially senior special agent Gibbs. Could have worn gloves. Sure he could have changed his clothes. I'm way ahead of you, Gibbs. That's why I'm doing a full analysis on all of Porter's wardrobe. However, make no mistake, you don't want to get in her way. And most importantly, you do not want to steal her cupcake. Nothing is sacred anymore. Yeah, tell me. Someone stole my cupcake. Number five, Penelope Garcia, Criminal Minds. But you know what, ma'am? I am done being nice. If you look to your cursor, you'll notice it's moving on its own. That's me hacking your secure network. If you're possibly facing prison time for computer hacking, wouldn't it be a no-brainer to take the government deal and use your skills for good? That's what tech genius Penelope Garcia decides. And now she's working for the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit as a technical analyst, where her incredible hacking skills serve up stone-cold justice. Let me get out of here. It's true. It better not be that guy. Oh, no, uh-uh. Along with her tech smarts, Garcia's also very friendly towards her co-workers. And they wouldn't change her even if they could. Okay, woman, you do know you're crazy, right? Mm-hmm, but like you always say, don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> okay, player, my bad. Of course, her job isn't always easy. Sometimes she'll witness horrifying things, causing her to worry about losing even more of her loved ones than she already has. My parents were killed by a drunk driver when they were out looking for me. And if they hadn't been out looking for me, then... Yet through it all, Garcia remains the optimistic and eccentric tech queen who keeps the team running. Is that odd? President tells us the number of victims should rise as the age falls. Number four, Betty Suarez, Ugly Betty. This is what you wanted, isn't it? To humiliate me, make me quit. God forbid you had to work with the ugly girl your dad forced you to hire. This ugly duckling is becoming a beautiful swan in the fashion biz. With her adult braces and mismatched ensemble, Betty Suarez isn't the type of girl you'd expect to see working at a big-time fashion magazine. You are an attractive, intelligent, confident businesswoman. However, she's brought on at Mode Magazine as an assistant to the womanizing editor-in-chief by his own father, much to her new boss's dismay. Betty's more gorgeous co-workers treat her like an outcast, but her attitude and work ethic have saved the company more times than they can count. You were good at your job, and if you don't believe me, then read these. Well, Amina had somebody hide all the positive letters to the editor when you were in charge. You don't have to be a bombshell beauty to make it big. Just look at Betty. She's successfully gone from a homely dweeb to a co-owner executive producer at a highfalutin London magazine. Not so ugly anymore, is she? I have something I have to tell you, and it's big. Bigger than you taking a job in London? Number three, Willow Rosenberg, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hi, Willow, right? Why? I, I mean, hi. The mousy characters can be full of surprises. 
At the start of the series, Willow is a shy and timid high school nerd, easily intimidated by the popular crowd. Well, when I'm with a boy I like, it's hard for me to say anything cool or, or witty or at all. I, I can usually make a few vowel sounds and then I have to go away. However, after making friends with a certain vampire slayer, her confidence grows and she becomes an essential part of the Scooby gang. She offers much needed assistance with research and planning, and later applies her newfound witchcraft abilities. Osiris, let her cross over! Willow. What's more, Willow is also part of one of television's first lesbian couples. But sadly, that love story ends tragically, unlocking poor Willow's dark side. She returns to the light, of course, but it just goes to show what happens when the shy and vulnerable characters are pushed to the edge. I love you. Stop! <laughs> Number 2. Alex Dunphy, Modern Family Luke got his head stuck in the banister again. It's hard being the middle child, but Alex takes it in stride. Ish. Alex is the youngest daughter in the Dunphy family, and without a doubt the most intelligent person in the house. Hey, check out that cute guy. <laughs> He's out of your league. He's reading a book. Having to deal with a shallow older sister and a goofy younger brother, Alex isn't above snarky comebacks and messing with her less intelligent siblings. You have your fans, I have mine. Someday, your fans are going to work for my fans. As you can probably tell, Alex is an overachiever in academics, often isolating herself from those below her intelligence. Like most real-life overachievers, she'll put a lot of pressure on herself to succeed, until she finally has a meltdown. What am I doing? I'm eating cake! No, no, no! Oh, no. Damn. Oh, no. Despite the pressure she puts on herself, our favorite bespectacled, nerdy middle child is definitely on the road to success. I just couldn't wait. Do you know how long I've been dreaming about this day? Leaving your family? Before we unveil our number one nerd, here are a few honorable mentions. I have powers. What? What kind of powers? The cold kind? I have to work this. I'd lived in a cave for five years in a world where they killed my kind like cattle. I am not gonna be cut down by some monster flu. I am better than that. Number one, Amy Farrah Fowler, The Big Bang Theory. If that was slang, I'm unfamiliar with it. This neurobiologist is introduced at the end of season three, when an online dating prank on Sheldon ironically finds him the perfect match. Though Amy is most definitely a genius, a social butterfly she is not. In fact, in her earlier appearances, she's blunt, serious, and has pretty low self-esteem, which might be why she puts up with Sheldon. Fascinating. <laughs> I hope you don't take what I'm about to do as a comment on what we just did. <laughs> However, as the series progresses, she grows closer to her man and the other girls, breaking out of her awkward shell to become a slightly more laid back and joyful woman who knows what she wants. How about this? French kissing. Seven minutes in heaven culminating in second base. <laughs> Neck massage. <laughs> then you get me that beverage. <laughs> She's gone from a Sheldon clone to her own unique individual, acting as an inspiration for other socially awkward nerds hoping to break out. Well, I enjoyed that more than I thought I would. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? She asked me a question, and I was helpful. Don't you get it? Wilhelmina doesn't need help. Who's your favorite nerdy lady? Guys, how about some music? Oh, I wouldn't care for that. Amy? No, thank you. Okay, uncomfortable silence it is. For more geeky top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Oh, you're really wedged in there. You want us to help guide you out? That question, it was like a hate crime.